Comparing partnership versus S-corporation tax consequences problem one. At the beginning of year one, Miss Mushroom, an individual, purchased a 15% interest in Fungi partnership for $23,000. Miss Mushroom Schedule K-1 reported her share of Fungi's debt at year end was $17,000 and her share of ordinary loss was $36,550. On January 1st, year two, Miss Mushroom sold her interest to another party for $2,500 cash. How much of her share of Fungi's loss can Miss Mushroom deduct in year one? Compute Miss Mushroom's recognized gain on sale of her Fungi partnership interest. How would the above questions and answers change if Fungi was an S corporation? This one has a lot of stuff going on, but actually it's not too bad. If you have yet to watch the partnership tax consequence general concept problems or the S corporation tax consequence general concept problems, please watch those first. These sets of problems dealing with comparing partnership and S corporation tax consequences are meant to be after you consider those videos and it's actually pretty simple after you go through those. So let's, we've got three questions really to answer and we're going to go in order. It's always easiest if you go in order of the questions that I present to you. I do that on purpose, okay? How much of her share of Fungi's loss can Miss Mushroom deduct in year one? So first thing is, we're told this is an entity tax as a partnership. We've got um, the individual purchased 15% interest for $23,000 cash um, per the K-1. Miss Mushroom's share of debt is $17,000. That's important. And there's an ordinary loss of $36,550. So how much of her share of Fungi's loss, the $36,550 they're referring to, can... Um, Miss Mushroom deduct in year one. So we're going to call this question one. We're going to start with question one. All right. Now remember, there's lots of different loss limitations. If we're trying to determine how much loss can Miss Mushroom deduct in year one, there's lots of loss limitations. The main one we focus on in these videos is the basis loss limitation. There's also the at risk limitations under code section 465. There's the um, passive activity loss limitations 469. I don't mention those. I don't mention any others. So you just need to worry about the basis loss limitation. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this $36,000 loss, right? $36,550 to be exact, this loss. And the question is, can we take all of that? And the idea is that it's going to be limited to the basis, the basis, okay? So we ask, we have to determine what is the basis if we have enough, if it's greater than or equal to 36550 okay? 36550 the positive 36550 then we can take the full amount. So to get just the basis, Initially on formation or or initially on contribution, I should say, Miss Mushroom purchased 15% interest for $23,000. So we put in the $23,000, that's the contribution, that goes in first. So $23,000 contribution. We then are going to consider any liabilities. Liabilities increase the basis. Um, they increase Miss Mushroom's basis. We're told that per the K-1, Miss Mushroom's share of the liabilities, 17,000. Okay, plus the liability portion, that's 17,000. If we add those two numbers together, 23,000 plus 17,000, we get $40,000 adjusted basis. Adjusted basis before considering the loss. So the question is, is the adjusted basis, which is $40,000, is it greater than the, um, the absolute amount, not the negative, but the absolute amount, 36550 and the answer is yes. So that means we can subtract away the full $36,550 loss. So how much of her share of the loss can Miss Mushroom deduct? It's the full amount. The full amount can be deducted, okay? So 40000 minus 36550 that's going to bring the basis down to $3,450. Is the adjusted basis at the end of the year? So we've just answered that question. Okay. The answer is yes, the full $36,450 sorry, $550 of loss can be deducted. The full loss can be deducted, yes. And that brings the basis down to $3,450. So now let's go down to um, the next question, which is to compute Miss Mushroom's recognized gain in the sale of her um, fungi partnership interest. Now this continues. This was year one. The information you just were told. Then it says, okay, next year 
On January 1st, year two, Miss Mushroom sold her interest in another to another partner for $2,500 cash. So now we're moving over to the second question. We're calling this number two, and this is also dealing with year two. So this, whenever you sell your partnership interest, the, the determination is the same determination we use in all of tax law. It's amount realized, AR I call it, minus adjusted basis. And a few different things go into amount realized. Amount realized includes actual cash received, so cash plus constructive cash, Sorry, I was doing a little um, plus there already while I was writing the H, sorry. Plus constructive cash, which is liability relief, plus the fair market value of property minus selling expenses. So the only thing that we're told here is we have $2,500 of cash. That's what's being sold for. And then there's also liability relief. If Miss Mushroom is selling her entire interest to another partner, we've got $2,500 cash. And then remember the $17,000 share of liabilities, that's liability relief because Miss Mushroom is no longer responsible for that. So that's where a lot of students get confused. That 17,000, that's now liability relief. That's now considered amount realized. There's no other property being received by Miss Mushroom and there's nothing about selling expenses. Selling expenses would be like if you're selling your home, let's say you pay a realtor or a lawyer to draft up contracts or pay them a commission. That's an example of selling expenses. We don't have that here. So 25,000 plus 17,000, um, that's going to equal $19,500 minus the adjusted basis of the partnership interest. Hey, we just calculated that at the end of year one, we calculated it as $3,450. So we subtract those two numbers, 19,500 minus 3,450. The gain that Miss Mushroom must recognize just the number amount. I'm not talking about character or anything like that. Just the number amount, which is what I care about here, is sixteen thousand fifty dollars. Sixteen thousand fifty dollars, and that answers the question for number two. So that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Again, a lot of review of what you've seen before. I threw in the calculation. Now we get to the last question, number three. Number three says, "Well, how would the the above questions answers change if Fungi was an S corporation?" So if it was an S corporation here, then remember the big thing, the big difference, there's many differences, but the biggest one is that we've been talking about with S corporations versus partnerships is that in partnerships, you're able to include this $17,000 in your basis, right? For S corporations, you can't. So the idea here is that when you go back to number one, right, and you recalculate that, then your basis is $23,000. And if there's a $36,000 loss, guess what? You can't take the full $36,000. So that means that you'd have a, um, you would have the remaining amount. I'm sorry, you would have um, the loss amount will be limited to, so the initial basis of 23,000 equals your basis before considering the lot before considering the loss, then you have this thirty thirty six thousand five hundred fifty dollar loss. Only twenty three thousand of the loss can be taken. Because remember, the rule is is the adjusted basis, which we just determined is twenty three thousand. Is it greater than or equal to thirty six thousand five fifty? And the answer is no. So you're only allowed to take up to the amount of the basis, which here is twenty three thousand dollars. So the remaining portion, which is going to be thirteen thousand five hundred fifty dollars, it carries over. It carries over to the future. To the future. Okay, it carries over to the future. That's what would happen in year one is you can only take 23,000 loss, not the full 36,550. How would, what would happen to the basis? And in, in number two, you would still have 19, I'm sorry, you wouldn't have a liability relief to worry about. It would be 2,500, you have a $2,500 gain because it'd be $2,500 cash received minus there'd be no liability relief or property or selling expense minus the um, adjusted basis. So now when you redo the calculation in number um, two, amount realized, there's no liability relief to worry about here because we don't do liabilities for uh, S corps. Amount realized 2,500 minus the adjusted basis, which we determined in number two is zero. What that does then is we have a $2,500 gain. $2,500 gain. Okay. So to recap, we have a $23,000 loss that can be taken in year one and a $2,500 gain in um, year two, rather than a $16,050 gain 
And you see the difference here. You see a difference when it comes to the amount of um, the, you get a loss, a bigger loss in year one of your partnership, but then you pay more gain in year two um, with respect to the, with the partnership consequences. But in S corporation land, you get a less of a loss, which that's not as good of a deal um, in year one. And then year two, you get a less of a gain. So that's a big, big distinction there. Now, um, another thing to note is I'm not going to go into this, but there is the effect of that lingering loss that you didn't get to consider um, that was out there. The Remember, you only got to use the $23,000 of the loss uh, in that situation. Well, the issue is, well, what about the 13550 that carries over in that situation? In certain situations, you could use that benefit of that loss in the, in the next year, even when you sell. But we're keeping it basic, the basic consequences. So it's just $2,500 gain to if you have an S corporation and in year two, and again, a $23,000 loss in year one. So just keep that in mind. So that's really everything. Just go back over, compare the consequences. You kind of see how things differ in different years. And that's the purpose of this problem.